Hi, I'm Dan from Academy365 and welcome to this video where we're going to explore metadata and the top two use cases that I've come across anyway um, in using it on my SharePoint sites. So first of all, what is metadata? Well, metadata is really just descriptive information that allows you to organize and categorize content. So a common analogy that's used for this is if you imagine a book. So a book will typically have a title, an author, year of publication, category of the book. All of this is really just metadata. It's basically information that describes the book without you actually having to read the book. So in SharePoint, we use metadata for the exact same purpose, okay? So to make this real, imagine in Academy 365, we have a book club. And as part of that book club, we have an Academy 365 library reading list, okay? So these are the books that we're gonna discuss within the club. So it looks something like this. So we can see here that every row in our list represents a book. And then all of these columns here, like in an Excel spreadsheet, these are all the metadata that we store against the book. So if we take the Hunger Games, for example, we have an image about the book, that's a metadata column. We have the author of the book, the published date, the summary, the category, suggested by activity, and a couple of other columns in here. You can put whatever you want in here, okay, as metadata. The way these are added is by this button here called add a column, okay? So by default, you're only gonna start out with the title, maybe the created date, uh, and who it was created by. But what you can do is you can add anything else in here you want. I added all these things in, they're just specific to this example, but you can make them specific to your use cases. So you come and you say add column, and then you've got all these different types of columns you can add in here. So you can have just a single line of text if you just wanna put in a free text statement. You can have a choice, and that's what we have here. And this is where I've predetermined what the categories are going to be. And then when I add a new item in here, I get to choose from a list. That's gonna really help build consistency into the tagging of information. Another example would be a person column here, like we have, if I choose this column, it allows me to select people that exist within my company. So lots of different ways, lots of different column types in here. So you just choose them and you build out whatever metadata columns you need to tag your information. Simple as that, okay? We won't overcomplicate it. So with all that being said, the first main use case that I typically use, and I think everybody in the world probably uses metadata for, is exactly by definition to describe and categorize the content that we're storing within our sites. And that's exactly what this example is showing you here, okay? It's all our books that have been categorized with metadata that we've decided is appropriate to the content that we're storing. So why would we use metadata in the first place, apart from adding nice little colors to our, our list and making it look pretty fancy? Well, it actually is functional, okay? So this, this list in here, okay, there's not too much stuff in it here because it's a fake book club and I just had to come up with some books quick. But if this list was an actual list that we were using for a long period of time, it would start to grow quite big, right? And we might want to come back into this list and you know, find maybe all of the biography books or look at the list in terms of everything we've discussed or everything that we haven't yet discussed as a book club. And what we can do with our metadata, once we have it in here, we can start to filter on it. So I can choose the filter icon up here and I can filter by my metadata column. So I might say, show me all the biography books and they're in here like this. And I could say, show me all the biography books that have been suggested by me. I can do that again and I can narrow it down further. So you can, you might have a list that could have thousands of items in it, okay? I know that the book example is a bit arbitrary, right? But in a, a real world setting, you might indeed have a list that has thousands of items and this is a great way to navigate it. So what you might also want to do, okay? So you can filter, that's great, that's brilliant. But say you want to have a different way of looking at this list, okay? We could also go to category and we could say group by category. And what that will do, it'll transform our list so that we can see everything by category. So I can see the fantasy books in here, the children's books here, um, anything I want, I can filter on it by that, which makes it also very easy. So if this was more process orientated, we could come back in here. So what we could do is I'll just take this grouping away. So we're back in here and we might say group by activity. So I can group by activity then. And now I can really quickly come in here and see, right, we've discussed nine books, but we've six books suggested. So which ones do we wanna discuss next? And I can come in here and have a look. Very simple, very easy. What's really handy about this is say you want to come in here and this is a common way you want to look at this list and navigate it. So if I have a set of filters or grouping that I'm happy with, I can always save it as what's called a view. So when I come into here, I can say save view as, and I'll call this our grouped view and I save it like so, and I'll just refresh the page. And we can see here now I have something called the group view. So I was in here before and I had all items. 
and that's going to be something like this. I don't mind that if it happens like this, we'll just move that out. The little asterisk means you've changed something that hasn't saved, so I'll just save that. So here we have the all items used. So this is basically just going to show me everything. And then I can always come back and come back in and say, I want the group view and I can come in here and I can see everything in here grouped. So you can mix all the different filters and groupings. You can mix all these things together, save them in views, and you can get really quick and specific at how you want to navigate and find items in this list. The views can be tailored to how you work with the information. Another way that categorize your content is very useful is that we can roll up content within a site or across multiple sites. Now again, the video I did on content rollups is, is a much better and more in-depth example of that, so I recommend you check that out. But just know that for now, if we're tagging content in here as say biography, and we had another book list somewhere else that also tagged by category and had biography there, it means we could go to another site and we could pull all of the books that are biographies um, from multiple sites into one place so we could have an overall library, um, which is a common example with policies across multiple sites shown directly on a single site or a single page. So, I mean, it's as basic as it gets for metadata, but it's fundamental that you kind of know that you can create these columns, you can tag stuff, you can then create views and you can create groupings and you can filter it. And it really makes lists, libraries, pages library more flexible and being able to see what's what rather than everything just being at the one level with no rhyme or reason or way to quickly navigate it. So that's the first use case, right? Pretty simple, categorize and organize your content, use metadata, thumbs up. So the second use case or example where metadata is really quite commonly used is to facilitate processes. Okay, so we have this reading list, but there's a process that sits behind this, okay? And the process is very simple in this example. It's basically where we invite anybody to submit a book suggestion to the list, and then we can have activity where it's either been suggested or we've discussed it, okay? Quite simple, but it's a very common concept where say in an internet setting, you might want people to submit feedback on the site and you might want to then manage it within a list. So if we go to the homepage of our site, we can see that we have, you know, about us, we're the book club, brilliant. And here's all the books that we have. Oh, and by the way, I didn't cover this bit. Uh, this is just another type of view in our list. So I'll show you really quick. If we came back to our list here, we have the option to view this as a gallery. And if we click gallery, we can see that we get something like this. And there's a really nice feature where I can click here again and I can say format current view and I have a card designer. So if I say edit card, then I can choose to hide or show any of the columns that we have in the list and I can, you know, just click them on or off and you can kind of set this the way you want it. It's really nice if you have an image metadata column in your list because then you get to show the image here, which gives it that extra little bit of a uh, bump let's say on the homepage. But anyway, let's go back to just the list view here, okay? So now that we've that out of the way, let's come back here. So back to our process, okay? So people can come in here, they can see all the books that we've reviewed and the rating, and, and then we can say, well, suggest a book to us, okay? So what are we gonna read next? So what we're really doing here is we have a call to action where someone clicks it, and then we present them with a Microsoft form. Now the form is structured so that the questions we're asking people match columns that we have in our list. So we have the title of the book, we have the author, when it was first published, a summary, and what is the category. So that's the user input information we want, and it matches directly to what we have in here that we want them to give us. So the way this works is someone will come in here, they're gonna fill this in, and then what we have running in the background is a Power Automate flow that watches this specific form for people who submit something to it. And when they do, it's gonna take that and it's gonna populate our list. Now there's a Power Automate template that will set this up for you really quick, it's super easy. I won't cover it now because I'm trying to keep this video kind of quick, but for now, let's just fill in this form and then we can watch it populate the list and you'll see then how you really start to use the list to facilitate these processes. So let's add in the details of a book here. So let's do a biography and we'll say it's Steve Jobs. Walter Isaacson is the author. It was first published on 24th of October, 2011. Brief summary, paste this in here and it's a biography. Okay, so now we filled out everything we want to suggest the book. We think it's a great book. We just click submit. So thanks for your submission. So that's great. That's happened. Now what's happening in the background is Power Automate has seen that someone has filled in a form and then they're saying, right, when that form was filled in, I need to populate the list. Simple as that. And then we come over to our list in here and we refresh the page. And as if by magic, we can see it's come in here. So now we have our book in here and we can see here that in terms of activity, it's in a suggested state, okay? And it's come in like that because we've set our default value for this column. We've two options and we've said the default is suggested, okay? So that's great. We can come in here and if we had a view then that we had for group by activity and we could then save this view as activity grouped by activity 
we could have it in here and then we can see everything that's been suggested so we can see Steve Jobs is in here and then we could also then sort these by the date they were created so then we'd see Steve Jobs at the top here so let's do that really quick actually while we're here so we don't have a column displayed here for when it was created so we can filter on it really through the UI but let's go to show or hide columns and we can see we have a created column here so I just tick it on click apply and now I can say sort by newer to older and this asterisk means I've changed something, I've not saved it, so let me save view as. So we come in here and now we see suggest that we see Steve Jobs at the top of the list. And then as a club or a group who come in here and look at these suggestions, we can see it's in here when we decide we're gonna discuss it or it's been discussed, we change the activity and that's how we start to manage a process. Now I know not everyone has a, a reading list and, and I picked this example just to go back to the original example of a book. But if you have a more realistic scenario where it's feedback or maybe it's a, a kind of a basic enough ticketing system, all of that is perfect for a list or a library because we can structure it to contain the information, whatever we want to track. So that's it. That's really just a quick example of the two most common use cases. One, get your information here, tag it and organize it. It's going to make it easier for you to navigate around the list. It'll also help with search as well by the way um, so if we see here psychological can type it in here hit enter and then we can see we get back the girl on the train okay so I didn't type in anything to do about a girl or a train but the metadata is indexed by our search so it means that like I said if we have a long list and I want to search by certain keywords it'll find it across all the metadata and return stuff back to me so super handy so there you go if you found this video useful please do like and subscribe it's a small click for you but it means a lot to me right uh, really helps with the channel and gives me that little bit of inspiration to keep going and if you didn't don't worry about it so like I said I have a video on a more advanced example of metadata and aggregating content from multiple sites I'll link to it down in the description please do take a look until next time see ya